Welcome to FaithWorks, the enlightening and empowering program that builds your faith to help you overcome every single challenge in this life. My name is Kaude Adeshoga. I'm your host. I want you to sit back, listen, and be blessed. God bless you. It's quiet. I thought it's the only way we teach faith that it's supposed to be quiet. Praise Jesus. My prayer is that God will give you wisdom. To manage your time profitably in the name of Jesus. Amen. Going back to the law of first impression, that's meeting people again for the first time. I remember I was in a forum, big forum in Abuja. When I finished, I came to sit in the waiting room where ministers sit, and I took this book. This is where I got my first inspiration for first. It was written by Dr. Buki. I got my inspiration from that. So last Sunday when she was teaching, most of the time I was lost. I was not here. I was like in a trance. And the Lord was telling me this, this, and you, those who saw me, I was at my tablet, I was writing. Then I'll come back. I'll hear, then I'll go again. And he was telling me this, this, you must take note of this, take note of this, take note of this, take note of this. Do you know that if you approach God's presence anyhow, he will not answer you? He says, come boldly to the throne of grace that you may obtain mercy that's Hebrews 4.16. It says in his Holy of Holies, it says, enter his gates with thanksgiving. You can't enter complaining. The guards will turn the person down. They will not let him enter. So even God has protocol, has etiquette, and has discretionary abilities. If that person says, oh, who is that one? Who is that one? Come, come how? How? Who, how are you entering here? You must come in a specified manner. It doesn't matter how traumatized you are. Don't say I'm traumatized, so I'm entering like say, no, if it's not bold, they will block the person. They will let him enter God's presence. He said, come boldly. Then he says, come with what? Confidence. Hebrews 4:16. To the throne of grace, then you obtain mercy. He said, enter his gates with thanksgiving. So you can't just walk anyhow. If you enter those gates, they'll be watching from the heavenlies. With thanksgiving and his cause with what? Praise. That is the laid down protocol. And you must understand that there's protocol in life. God has protocol. Man has protocol. And I remember I was looking at this book. I sat in that forum. Ministers came to sit. Maybe I, was, I felt slightly tired. So I leaned my back down. I stretched my legs like this. And I just turned to a part of the book. The way you sit, people will perceive your personality from the way you speak. Immediately I changed. And I crossed my leg. And I sat properly. <laughs> But let's be honest, you want to meet somebody for the first time, he's sitting like this, and he's like, who is this? What's this? What's this? What's, this? What's, what's the meaning of this? You're meeting somebody for say, hey, excuse me, how are you? Good morning. Now, let's look at it this way. You go and meet somebody, you want to take a loan. And somebody says, oh, I know a friend. He can give you the loan. I've mentioned your name to him. Go and meet him. He will give you the loan. Do you know that? The way he receives you, we decide how you're going to talk about the Lord. If you enter, he says, oh, you're a uh, femo, femo, how are you? Yeah, sit down. You know the way you take, ah, okay, I beg, I get, and there's one low where I want to take. That's how you talk, Abi. So, good morning, how are you? Good morning, what's your name, man? Fem, please have your seat, thank you. Then he calls you, you go say, I beg, you say, I beg again. You say, good morning, sir. Actually, there's a business, that's how you start talking. Am I right? We say, hey, femo, you don't say, good morning, sir. Say, Hana, I beg, they say you submit this loan well. <laughs> the problem is, say, I need money, right? But if you enter here and he says, Good morning, sir. Oh, please, do have your seat. Good morning. How are you? Please have your seat. Tea or coffee? No. <laughs> That's why the Bible says, Put a night. That's not coffee time. Oh, please, I'm okay. You take coffee, you lose the money. Then you sit. Then the man crosses his leg and he says, Yes, um, I was told you need a loan. That's not the time to say, uh, And what? Actually, sir, uh, there's this business I'm doing. Then you start giving details of the business. If the man comes and you see his button, you know they are not matching. They are slack like this. You know the man is not giving to detail. You don't give more detail about the loan. You two just give. If you see the button matching everywhere, you know him. Then he calls it, oh, drop this uh, speck here. Then he picks the speck and he talks to the, okay, thank you very much. Oh, who arranged this is not well needed. Just a minute. And arrange, you yourself know there's trouble. I mean, when you want to talk to him, you should start arranging your talk, Abi. Am I correct? Yes, sir. You start arranging your talk, Abi. 
But if you see him, jam, 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 you two, you present, jam, 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 right? I always like to have a complimentary card to live with somebody when I meet with them. But it also dawned on me, they can misplace your card. So what I do is I have my own personal logo. I call it my personal brand. It's a word I will leave with you that you never forget, that you always remember me for the rest of your life. Just once. You know, it's possible. If you can just believe, we will, have it. We will get it done. God bless you, sir. He will remember me more than the card. Develop your personality with a brand. Develop your personality with a phrase. Develop your personality with a short prayer. Don't go long. Nobody has time like that. Develop. There's oh, that woman that will always pray for you before you go. Oh, wonderful woman. They must have something about you. It's good to have your complimentary card, but it's better to have that brand. Because some of you have misplaced complimentary cards, right? Or do you have all the complimentary cards they give you from the time you've been collecting? You have it? I know. But there are some statements somebody has made you have not forgotten in 20 years. It's a brand of a person. It's a logo of a person. If you're driving on the road and you're looking for a bank, there are certain buildings, even if you don't see the, the, the name of the bank, the way it is constructed, you already know this is this bank. That is the brand of that bank. You just know. Once you see color, ah, you are not sure. Maybe you see orange. You are not sure until you get that, oh, it's not a bank. I thought it was so, so, and so. That orange gives you an impression that this is this bank. If it is green, it gives you an impression this is this bank. If it is red and white, it gives you an impression this is this bank. Those are brands and logos. And God said, be branded as a human being. Be branded, be a logo. Have your logo that each time you meet people, you leave as a lasting impression that they keep remembering you for. It helps them to remember more than the card. But have the card too. It gives you order. Praise God. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. <laughs> Communication. And um, I've always heard that all wars, all wars, truly end on a negotiating table. All wars. And I hear the Korean War is not officially over. North and South Korea technically are still at war. But I'm not sure if they've, if they've ended it now. In the last those, they are summit now. When the South, I think they've ended it now. As at last year, technically, North and South Korea are still at war. But I think last year, when, I mean, with this uh, Trump summit they were having, you see, some of you don't, you only watch home video, you only watch where they do ritual, you only watch somebody that is uh, marrying cis people, and you only watch, and then you, hear, then you hear statements, then you hear statements that don't align with the scripture, in that, then that will be ringing in your head. Enlighten yourself. They told Jesus, and I found out that Jesus had a means of getting news. He listened to news. He said, there's those whom the tower of Siloam fell. They came to tell him. They said, Herod seeketh thee. He said, go tell that fox. That means he had intelligence report. They didn't have CNN and all that, but he had intelligence report. He was abreast of what was going on. He wasn't just raising the dead. He knew what was going on in the nation. He knew tower of Siloam fell. How many of you know what has happened in Bahamas? Don't know. Well, you know that uh, uh, that actress just married that big boy. You know that, right? And now that actress just took in for that man, that, uh, that billionaire. Some of you know that, right? And it doesn't profit you anything. It just hypes you up. It doesn't profit you. Get what will profit you. Praise God. It doesn't develop your personality. Even when you discuss it outside, it doesn't develop your personality. Praise Jesus. Okay, I'll be rounding up now. Um, we'll look at communication, which is very, very important. And um, most partners are best behaved at the first introduction to the family. Meaning, if you take your boyfriend to meet your family, they ask him, what will you drink? Most of the time they say Coke, stop. They don't say good, they don't try it, no. Even if he drinks the good, he won't try it there. Say, no, mommy, Coke is okay. <laughs> Are you sure? Ah, in fact, water is enough. If in the house and he enters, he removes his shoe. Sure, 
Those shoes are shoes. When he gets to those in lost places, eh, the shoe is, if they say you should remove shoe, he just stood quietly by the side. Ah, then he will sit. They always sit well. <laughs> Praise God. Why? They're trying to create an impression. And they're trying to communicate to the in-laws that I'm a decent, responsible, God-fearing, nice, romantic guy that will take good care of your daughter. They're trying to send a message. Praise God. Hallelujah. Communication is not just when you talk. But as soon as they leave that place and they get to the house, if he's removed the shoe again, say, ah, boy, they say, don't disturb my life. <laughs> Throw the other shoe like that. That one is sitting like this in the in lost place, crossing leg. Just sits anyhow. And, but he does that to create an impression and communicate. Most people, when they don't communicate well, they say a word in two minutes and spend five years trying to do damage control. Five years. Still trying to do damage control for what they said in two minutes. I would rather add another five minutes to your two minutes and talk wisely. And even after 10 minutes, you don't know what to say, just keep quiet. Than say wrongly. Communication is a means of connecting people. Now you are meeting people and you communicate to connect with them. It means to share and bond with people. So in communicating, you are bonding. I mean, people say, I just love that guy. That's your first one. I just Because of one or two things he said, I just love that person. And some would just say, I can't stand that guy because of one or two things. Then they start trying to tell you how nice, ah, you don't know him, oh, oh, have you seen him before? The communication has caused damage. So, this, yeah, 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 don't say that again. That man, do you know that he's the one that gets us? And say, eh? What he has said has caused such a monumental damage that it may take seven years to repair a phrase. Seven years to repair. Even some, after seven years, that phrase is still not repaired. So, it's important to understand and learn the skill to communicate. It's a skill and it has to be taught. You know, you don't, when you pray to God, you're communicating with God. Do you know that Jesus said, when you pray, say in this manner, our Father, which art in heaven. You know, prayer is communication. So he's teaching you how to communicate with his Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's just praise. Give us this day our daily bread. That's request. Forgive us and on and on and on. See what he gave to praise. If you look at Jesus addressing his church, he will first praise them. What was Abigail's issue? Communication. And that's why David married her. Communication. He brought such a personality that David looked and the moment the husband died, he went to get her straight away. Why? That personality was boosted by the communication. Do you desire to live and operate God's way of doing things? Do you desire to understand how faith works? Fundamentals of Faith is a book written by Coyote Adishoga. It teaches in simple terms how to operate the God kind of faith that helps you overcome all hurdles of life. Fundamentals of Faith is available for purchase at Trem Bookshop Obani Koro Lagos and Bible Wonderland Stadium Suruleri Lagos. Get a copy today. Now, these things are basic etiquettes and there's still more to learn. You think because you can speak in tongues, confess the word, if you don't have those etiquettes, you have, that person will have a problem with both God a man. Like I told you, Jeremiah 35, God saved the lineage of the Rechabites, not because of faith, but because of manners. Because of manners. Praise God. Hallelujah. They told David that the judgment of God is coming. 
and he's going to deal with you for three days. David said, oh God, I appeal to your mercy. Find me a place in your heart to show me mercy. God said it will not continue. They told another man, your children are misbehaving. And for that cause, none in your lineage will live to a ripe old age. None of your children will have gray hair. They will die in their prime. He says, the Lord, let him do what pleases him. What? People who know to communicate, they defeat God in, in conversation. Conversation. Moses, God said, I want to wipe out these people. Moses said, you know what? I'm not saying you shouldn't wipe them out, but this is the problem we're going to have. People will say you were able to bring them in and you were not able to, sorry, you were able to bring them out. You were not able to bring them in. God said, it's true, Moses. or I won't do it again. Communication. That's what ends war. Negotiation. Talk. And that's what starts war. Words. That's what ends words. Wars. Words. You know what destroy marriages? Words. Why would the great general of Samson, why would he fall for a woman? Go and check the way she speaks. And check the way most wives, the way they speak. I thought you were a honest and responsible man. How did he lie? He said, my love. I thought you loved me. Say, yes, I do. Uh, why did you lie to me? She didn't reprimand him. She didn't abuse him. She was just cajoling that. You, you've not proven this love. He proved it. What his parents didn't know, he gave to the prostitutes. Why? Words. Praise God. Check the scriptures. Men have used words to conquer more than men have used swords to conquer. Words have won more medals than swords. My prayer is that God will give you the tongue of the learned. Amen. So you will know how to speak a word Amen. to him that is weary Amen. in season. Amen. He will season your tongue with salt. Amen. He will make your mouth like a sharp sword. Amen. He will give you a tongue and a wisdom. And when you speak, your enemies and your contemporaries will not be able to resist nor gainsay in the name of Jesus. Words are crucial. We can't go into it. Communication. The ability to have your way by speaking. The ability to take what you are not qualified to have just by speaking right. God will give it to you in Jesus' name. Amen. God is interested in your manners. God is interested in your ethics. God is interested in your relationship with other people. It's so serious that even if you bring a gift to God, say, Lord, I want to give you all I have in this world. He said, no, you have a problem with that man. That man that your neighbor there is not greeting. Go and resolve first. He said, I will leave your gift at the altar. Go and reconcile with your brother first. How are you going to solve that? It's with words. And that's how it can affect your relationship with God and affect your personality. You can have a sweet, pleasant personality. And people who don't know you can vouch for you. I once went to, um, I forgot to pay my refuse bill. And the person in charge of the place is, her husband is an imam. She's hajia, turbans, the whole, everything is, when you enter the place, it's all inscription in Islamic, everywhere. Everywhere, all his, everywhere. you know, this <laughs> the true original. And I don't know what happened. I, I, I forgot to pay my bill or so. Maybe I miscalculated. And they said they will not. She said, if there is anybody that you must not stop carrying his refuse, his pastor, keep carrying it. If he doesn't pay, take from my salary. That's what the imam and the hijab and all of them said. Say, take from my salary. It's all about relationship. Praise God. Hallelujah. Managing relationship. Choosing the right words for the right occasion. You know what he said? Abigail said, he said the husband was drunk. She didn't talk. She waited for the next day. Calm down for the head to clear. Then she spoke. Managing, communicating, communication, effective communication. It can win you medals with God, win you medals with men. Praise God. Pharaoh said, 
The Bible says the answer Joseph gave Pharaoh, Pharaoh was pleased. Say, I have never heard somebody speak like this before. Thank God. They didn't ask Joseph, what do you want? He said, please let me go back to my family. He said, you shall, he didn't say his prince, his nephew, no. You shall be next in command to me. I don't think any of his staff ever spoke like that before. How did Joseph get it through? God promised you. How did he get it? Words. God promised you a good marriage. How did he get it? Words. Personality. Words. Glory. Hallelujah. Let me give you a, let me just advise as I close. I, I, I just have a disposition to be always positive. Say, ah, uh, that useless uh, governor. He has stolen all the money. It will not be well with his family. Hey, it is well. Hey, with all what they've been stealing, no, people are still getting blessed. And I'm sure you too, you will still get blessed. <laughs> you know, that just disarmed the person, right? You know, the person will say, no. You know, they don't say that. Say, so, no, the state will survive. He can't survive. That's what they will tell you. Nigeria, Nigeria can't move into a split. But say, but you will still get blessed. Say, yes, that's true. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> Praise God, Right? Right? And some of you, when you meet someone for the just leave, you never leave without a short prayer. God bless you, my brother. And I pray who grant you our desires. You say, oh, that woman that always prays before she leaves you. Not that woman that is always fighting with everybody. Praise God. God wants the prosperity of your spirit. He wants you to walk by faith, overcome all the operations of the kingdom of darkness. He wants the prosperity of your soul. He has no delight in fools. He wants to interact with you. He wants to dialogue with you. He wants to discuss with you. You don't discuss with people who you cannot interact with. God wants to interact with you. He wants to fellowship. The Bible says in the garden, he will come to fellowship with Adam. God wants to fellowship. He wants to ask you questions. He asks Peter, who do men say that? Why did these men do this? Peter will give an answer. That's good. He wants to have a fellowship, interaction. Then he wants you in your natural state to have such interaction with people. And triumph. He wants you a whole, a total being. Total. He's coming for a triumph church that is victorious. Not the one that is victorious. They quote all the Bible, they are sick. He's not coming for those. He wants one that is healthy. <coughs> that is victorious over Satan. Healthy in their body. Operating in wisdom. Uh, have etiquette. Have manners. He's coming for a total being, complete, total, absolute, head to toe. Nothing missing, nothing lacking. That's what he's coming for. Heaven is not an escape route out of this earth. We will live here triumphant. Amen. When we're going to leave, we're going to look back and say, yes, we've finished the race. Haven't accomplished what was written concerning us. Hallelujah. Bless all our children. Well, you may not say amen. I'll say amen to mine. Bless all the grandchildren. Amen. Bless the great grandchildren. Amen. Prophesy of things to come. Amen. Then we will pray to go. Say, now God, let me depart in peace. Amen. For my eyes have seen the salvation of God. As you said it, I have experienced it. Now let me go. We're not, we're not going to escape her. We're going to live triumphantly. Amen. Praise Jesus. God will grant you wisdom, Amen. wisdom, Amen. wisdom, Amen. wisdom. Amen. You need to rise for that wisdom, Amen. wisdom, Amen. wisdom, Amen. wisdom, Amen. wisdom, Amen. wisdom, Amen. wisdom. He said, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask from God, who given liberally and does not upbraid. Wisdom. Amen. Kalibu shakataya. Favor with God. Amen. Favor with men. Amen. I would say, start favor before the king. There are men that are carrying your blessings. They won't give it to you until they say you have favor with them. Favor was carrying Joseph's blessing. God can prophesy to you. I can say you rule for the nation of the... That's the man that all your rulership is in his hand. If he doesn't release it, you won't get there. They've said of David and all of them, the men are in custody of your blessings. Say the treasures of darkness, they're in the custody of people. And you must know how to get it from them without compromising. It 
takes wisdom. And God will teach you. Amen. It will help you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. That any aspect of your life that is giving you pain. I remember a lady once, her son was into drugs, cocaine. And we prayed. And that boy said, he's a pastor now. Left cocaine. He was a cocaine drug addict. He was taking heroin. Ruined the family, sold, sold everything. They took things from the house to go and keep the family houses. Because if he's, he's going to sell to itself to buy drugs. And God healed him. And he became he's a pastor. And if there's any such that's bringing grief or pain to the heart, ask for God's intervention on that aspect of your life in Jesus' name. It will heal that situation and restore joy to that home. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. I believe you have been blessed by that message. And I know your faith has been built up. And I know all those challenges in life are all going to fall before you in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to know Hebrews 12 says, Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. You need him in this walk. And so if you're out there and you don't have Jesus in your life, I want you to say after me, say, Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you're the only begotten Son of God. Come into my life, be my Lord and my Savior. It's as simple as that. Displayed on the screen is diverse information on how you can interact and reach out to us. Take advantage of it, and I'll be expecting to hear from you. Till I come your way again same time next week, I want to tell you, don't give up. Faith works. It's working and it will work in your life. God bless you.